there, Michelle Visser, author of Sweet Maple. Today we're going to make some delicious, homemade, all-natural maple candy. So it's just days away from Christmas. We got dumped on with over two feet of snow. And I don't feel like trying to go out to do any last minute Christmas shopping. So today I am making some candies as some delicious Christmas gifts. If you are a backyard sugar maker, this is such a special gift to make for someone because literally you made it from drop to finish. I was gonna say scratch to finish, but you know what I mean? You literally collected the sap to make this gift. And it's so special, but don't worry about it. If you're not a backyard sugar maker, you don't have to be one to make this amazing candy. You can buy maple syrup. You do want to make sure it's 100% all natural, pure maple syrup, nothing junk. I'll leave a link in the show notes to my favoriteest maple syrup at the absolute best price. If you buy the extra, extra large, it's the best bulk price I've ever found on syrup, and you can make a whole lot of wonderful candy. For those of us who are maple syrup fanatics, we would have no question how to use this candy, but for people who aren't really familiar with maple syrup and don't realize how amazingly good it is in so many ways, they think that they can just use it as syrup on pancakes, I put together some cards that you can print out cut into smaller little cards and attach them with a ribbon to your gift and it gives them a whole lot of ideas so they know absolutely lots of ways they can use this delicious candy. So come on in with me to my kitchen and I'll show you how to make this. But first, let me take you to the end of the drive because it's so gorgeous this morning. Let me show you how pretty it is. It's super easy to make this candy. I do explain actually how to make all different confection options in my book, Sweet Maple. I have a section all about the different things you can make with your maple syrup. And this chart breaks down the temperatures and the details you need to know for all the different things from sugar, maple sugar to maple cream, to the different kinds of maple candies you can make. So today I made what I call stained glass hard candy and I call it that, I mean, you can call it whatever you want, but I think it looks like stained glass when you hold it up to the window, which the light's not coming the right way. It's just so pretty. And I made some maple crumbles. Let me just turn this down. So I have a little bowl here, my maple crumbles. This I was going to make more of a soft candy and I'll tell you how to do that but I <laughs> left it unattended it got a few degrees hotter than it should have and I also stirred it a little too long but that's okay you really can't mess up with maple candies I'm telling you I instead have what turned out to be maple crumbles and I'm going to package these up as well as my stained glass candy as a gift I'm gonna put a little baggie of each in a mug and make a really nice gift for some ladies so the stained glass candy, I keep on my counter all the time year round. As you can see, my jar is getting a little low. So I'm gonna make extra today, not just for gifts, but some for us. But I keep it there because it's a nice little energy boost. You just grab a piece and it's of course candy and delicious, but it's literally 100% maple syrup. And it's as good for you as any sugar could be. Okay. This is our maple syrup, a jar of it. We make about 14 gallons here on our homestead every year. And you simply pour a quart of maple syrup into a stock pan. You do wanna make sure it's a really big pan because if you're not familiar with maple syrup, I gotta tell you, it will boil over very quickly. So you want a really big pan and you need to have a good thermometer. It's important to have 
the right kind of candy thermometer so that you can really closely monitor the temperature. So once you've poured your syrup into your tall pan, you need to let it boil for a while. You need to let the temperature get up to about 244 if you want to make soft candies and you want to have your molds ready that you can pour it into when it's ready. Once it reaches 244, you then need to pull it off the heat and let it cool down to 175. Be careful, it happens faster than you think. At that point, when it's 175, you start stirring. Once you have stirred it and noticed that the color is changing and you have a pretty kind of caramel color to it, like a light caramel color, then go ahead and put it in your molds. It doesn't take long to set, it happens very quickly. If you miss the window and it starts to harden on you, that's okay. Or if you get the temperature a little bit above 244, or you let it cool a little below 175, or you stir it for too long, any of those different factors can cause your soft candy to turn into maple crumbles. But that's okay, because maple crumbles are delicious. I mean, you really can't mess up maple candy because no matter what you do that might wind up being wrong, it's still a delicious, Candy. And you can even take these crumbles and grind them up, or you can break them up like in a bag with a hammer. <laughs> grind them up and make sprinkles for on top of your cupcakes or cakes. And they're great to put into hot chocolate or hot tea or coffee, as well as the hard candy. The hard candy is what I like to just keep on my counter and suck on it as candy, but it also can be melted nicely into a hot cup of tea or coffee. And the great thing with that is you don't have to go to the fridge to get out the maple syrup. You can keep your jar of candies wherever is convenient. If you have like a coffee stand or an area on your kitchen counter where you're always making your tea, you can keep the candies right there and have them easily accessible to sweeten your tea. And then to make your hard stained glass kind of candy, you want to do the same thing in the beginning. You get your maple syrup, a quart of it, you pour it into a very tall pan, but you let it boil to 300 if you want to have your stained glass harder candy. At 300, you no longer have to do anything else. You know, with the softer candy, you need to let it cool and you need to stir it. With the hard candy, when it reaches 300, this is like the easiest maple confection you can make. It reaches 300, you immediately, you have your cookie trays ready. Spray very lightly with some I use olive oil, you can use cooking spray. You pour right from your pan into your cookie trays and it gets hard really quickly. So don't waste any time, take it from the stove, pour it into your pan, and within a minute or two, you will have a hard sheet of candy on each of your trays. This is the one that I made earlier. Um, I've already broken parts of it. It was a long shape of my cookie tray. And it's so simple, you just break the pieces, break it more until you get it down to the size you want. And that's it. You have an amazing gift to give some very happy folks in your life. Because I wanted them for my own purposes, for the gifts I was making this year, I made gift cards that explain all the uses for these different types of maple candy. And it just makes it extra nice if you want to tie that on to a mug filled with the candy or just a bag that you filled with the candy and give it as a gift. To access those, see the comments um, in the show notes, and I'll tell you how you get a printable copy of the gift cards. So if you wind up pouring it too thick on your cookie tray and you have something that's too hard to break because it's so thick. Well, first of all, if you do it when it's still warm to your touch, like it's almost a little too hot to touch, it's gonna break pretty easily. But if you let it cool too much, you're gonna have these thick pieces that you can't break with your hands. Oh, I said that and then it breaks. But see, it's still, I can't get any smaller now. And that's just way too big for a piece of candy to suck on. So here's what I do when I need to get my bigger pieces smaller. I just get a Ziploc bag. And I fill it up with these thicker, larger pieces. 
And then a hammer would probably work really well. I have this like, I don't know what this really is, like a cookie mallet kind of thing. So I'm going to break it with this. When you are to the bottom of your jar, or if you have to use a bag to break up your pieces like this, you're going to wind up with a bunch of little shivers, slivers, I guess, of candy. These do not waste them. Put a tablespoon worth of them in a cup, add some hot water, and you can either just have warm maple tea, which I actually love, or add some loose leaf tea and have some maple flavored tea. But every little piece of this is useful, so don't make sure you don't waste it. If you have even just a little bit in the end of your jar when you're done your candy, don't waste a drop of it. Add hot water. Swirl that around. and then add it to your cup, and you have some wonderful maple water to make a cup of tea. So there you have it. Whether you are looking for a last minute Christmas gift, or you're just in the mood for some delicious candy that actually is the finest, healthiest sugar you could eat, then make yourself some maple candy.